Iowa 413 Nonlinear Programming Study Guide. This question considers the function f of x is equal to x1 cubed plus x2 cubed. Part A asks whether f of x is convex on R2. So is f of x convex on R2? Let's do a variable change from x to z. You'll see why this is useful in a minute. So, so we'll rewrite the functions f of z is z1 cubed plus z2 cubed. And the question of whether this function f is convex on R2 has to do with evaluating the Hessian to see whether it's positive semi-definite. And the requirement that's positive semi-definite is written here. Now the reason we did the variable substitution here to get to f of z is because we want to evaluate whether the Hessian is positive semi-definite for all points in R2. Evaluating the Hessian at every point z, z being in R2. So at any particular point z, we need to look to see whether x, trans, uh, x transpose times the Hessian times x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, for all x not equal to zero, x and r2. So that's where we did the variable substitution get from get to x to z, so that we can see that z is the point at which we are evaluating the Hessian, and x is the variable that we're using to evaluate whether the Hessian at that point z is positive semi-definite. So let's compute the necessary partial derivatives. Starting with the partial derivative of f with respect to z1, which is 3z1 squared. And then the second partial derivative of f with respect to z1, and then z2, and that's equal to 0. And then the second partial derivative of f of z with respect to z1, 6z1. Let's do the partial derivative of f with respect to z2. And that's 3z2 squared. Now let's do the second partial derivative of f with respect to z2, z1, that's 0. And then the second partial derivative of f of z with respect to z2, 6, z2. So the Hessian here, h of z is equal to 6 z1, 0, 0, 6 z2. And we're going to ask whether x transpose h of z x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x not equal to zero, but somewhere in R2. So now, my intuition about this problem tells me that 
it's probably not convex on R2. Now let me explain why I have that intuition. It's because suppose that Z2 was 0, okay? Then F of Z would be Z1 cubed. And what would that look like if we had just F of Z and Z1? And it would just be something that looked like that, just the cubic function, okay? And this is clearly not convex. Even if you ignore this little wiggle here, basically that it's not convex. The cubic function is not convex. And so probably this function isn't convex. So what we need to do is to show that a function is not convex is just find one place in which the Hessian is not positive semi-definite. And I am guessing, I'm going to use here the point z is equal to negative 1, negative 1. And I'm going to see if I can show that the Hessian is not, uh, not positive semi-definite at z equals, z equals negative 1, negative 1. So the Hessian is 6, z1, 0, 0. 6z2. My intuition said let's look at the point z is equal to negative 1, negative 1. So when we evaluate our Hessian at negative 1, negative 1, we get negative 6, 0, 0, negative 6. We look at x transpose x ask is it greater than or equal to zero for all x non-zero x is in r2 if you multiply this out what we get is negative six x1 squared minus six x2 squared, saying it's be greater than or equal to 0 for all x non-0, x is, is somewhere in R2. But here's the problem. x1 squared is always greater than or equal to 0. x2 squared is always greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, when you take the negative 6 x1 squared minus 6 x2 squared, this quantity on the left-hand side is always less than or equal to 0. Whoops, less than or equal to 0. So this is not true. Therefore, the Hessian of z there has, uh, at the uh, point negative one, negative one, is not, it's not positive semi-definite. Therefore, it is not convex. So f is not convex on all of z is in r2 because it's not convex at the point negative 1 negative 1. So there's another easier way to do this actually and that's to look at 2 by 2 matrix a b c d and see that this matrix is positive semi-definite, PSD, if and only if A and C are greater than or equal to zero and AC minus B squared is greater than or equal to zero. So let's apply this condition to our matrix. So when we evaluate our matrix at this point, z is equal to negative 1, negative 1, then the Hessian okay, at that point, 
negative 1, negative 1 is equal to negative 6, 0, 0, negative 6. And what we will notice is A is that element right there, negative 6. But for the matrix to be PSD, A has to be greater than or equal to 0. But it's less than or equal to 0. So it is not greater than or equal to 0. We're done right there. We now know the matrix at this point, Z is equal to negative 1, negative 1, is not positive, semi-definite. So the question here is the function F convex on the set K is all X such that X is non-negative. That's your initial statement. But recall, we re-parameterized our function F in terms of Z to evaluate the Hessian more eas easily. So we can rewrite K as the set of all Z such that z is greater than or equal to 0. And that will be a little bit more useful in looking at our Hessian and seeing whether it's positive semi-definite. Now, we recall that the Hessian written in terms of the variable z is 6z1, 6z2, and zeros here. Just to remind you, a generic 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, D. This matrix is positive semi definite if A is greater than or equal to 0, C is greater than or equal to 0, and A, C minus B squared is greater than or equal to 0. So let's see if, if this Hessian here is positive semi-definite. So A is 6Z1. Since Z is constrained to be greater than or equal to 0, Z1 is greater than or equal to 0. 6Z1 is greater than or equal to 0. So check. That's OK. That first condition is true. C is equal to 0. So that means it's trivially greater than or equal to 0. Check. Check. Now, AC minus B squared. So A is 6, Z1. C is 0. B is 0. We'll square it. 0 squared. So that's 0 minus 0. That's greater than or equal to 0. Check. So all of, these, all of these three conditions for positive semi-definiteness hold any time that Z is in this set of being greater than or equal to 0. So that means that H of Z is positive semi-definite on that whole K. That means that the function F is convex on K.